For the past year, I've been building a company and I've come to the unfortunate conclusion that none of the existing 83 JavaScript frameworks fit our needs. And so we decided to build our own called Tarodactyl.js coming to a GitHub repo near you very soon. So my plan in 2023 is to continue to learn and invent this new JavaScript framework. Just kidding, that's a complete lie. We have invented zero new technologies and I actually want to keep it that way. My general philosophy is not to care too much about the tech. I care much more about what the technology enables rather than the underlying technology. This has been true my entire career, but especially true as a founder. My priority and actually the company's survival depends on shipping value to users as quickly as possible, even if that means using boring tech. And in fact, boring tech is actually preferable because number one, it allows us to move faster because we're familiar with it. And number two, we will likely have fewer hiccups with boring technology because it's been tried and tested and it works with other tools. With that said, there's still, of course, a lot of technologies I want to learn in 2023 that I'll cover in this video to help us build a compelling product for software engineers. I got this idea from Neatcode and Ben Awad who have been doing this kind of video for years. Here's a look at our existing front end. Both mobile apps are built natively. The Android app is built with Kotlin and XML layouts and the iOS app is built with Swift and SwiftUI. And the reason we decided to build them natively as opposed to using a cross-platform technology like React Native or Flutter is because we've been professional Android developers for a combined 15 years. And so building the Android app was actually really easy. The only real additional cost was building out an iOS app. The web application is built with TypeScript, Next.js, Tailwind, and it's all deployed on Vercel. Next is a React-based web framework, which lets you do server-side rendering. And this is important because we want Google to discover and surface all the great content we have on Taro. When the crawler or some client requests data, then the server can reply with fully formed HTML with all the content embedded. One of the things I want to learn here in 2023 is Google structured data. Structured data is a standardized format for providing information about a page and classifying the page content. For example, we run live events on Taro every few weeks, and those are a natural fit for the events structured data. And we have thousands of discussions on career topics that we can appropriately mark up with QA page structure. This will give us more prominence in Google results and let us reach more people. We're using Firestore, which is a NoSQL document-based database, which automatically scales up or down based on how much data you have. With Firestore, the data lives in documents and they're organized into collections. This is nice since you automatically get things like caching and offline mode on mobile and anything you're able to express with the query language provided is guaranteed to be fast. The limitation with Firestore is that there are constraints on how you can query the data. Notably, you can't do joins. So for example, if I have a response to a discussion in Taro and that response has 10 likes, so 10 users have liked it, you might imagine wanting to show details about those users. But if the data is just a list of user IDs, you can't do that kind of join. And so with Firestore, you have two options. One is you can do an N plus one query, which is now I have to go and do 10 queries for those 10 users and then retrieve data about them. And obviously that's inefficient. Or the other more common approach is called data denormalization, which means that you can embed some details about that user into this parent object. So you get all the data in one query. If you're careful with how you model your data and you're okay with some data being repeated in multiple places, then Firestore is a really good option. A lot of the technology I wanna learn in 2023 is based off of doing something with the data we have in Firestore. First, we'd like to create a feed of content for the user based on things like their seniority level, their company, and where they're located. That kind of personalization is not possible with Firestore. So it requires using a real backend. We only have 25,000 users on Taro. So this is really lightweight compared to social media scale. For example, I worked at Pinterest and Facebook, where in a given day or given week, you'd have literally hundreds of millions of users or actions being taken. And the idea with Taro is that we're gonna pre-generate a personalized feed for every user. Every time a new piece of content is generated, we can find out which users would care about it and inject it into their queue of content. This is called the push model for generating a feed. I'm thinking that we can stream all the Firestore data into Google BigQuery, which is a serverless data warehouse. And then we can do some computation in the backend using probably Kotlin or TypeScript get the data from BigQuery, and then generate the optimal feed for every user. The other improvement we wanna make with our data is to provide a better search experience. Right now, search on Taro is laughably bad. It's just doing a string match. So all the things you'd expect, like spell correction or fuzzy match, are not there. I'm planning to use Algolia for this, which is a hosted search API. 
And it has some really cool features like enabling synonyms. For example, entry level and junior engineer might be considered synonyms and geo awareness. Luckily, there's an Algolia extension in Firestore, which should fit our needs pretty well. We use Firebase storage for all of our image and video data, and we have about 30 gigabytes of media total. The data here is stored in multiple data centers around the US, in particular in Iowa and Oklahoma. We did this because the vast majority of our users are located in the US or Canada, and storing data close to our users means less latency. So for example, if you go to gcpping.com, you can see the latency differences between the various Google servers and your location. So for me, living in California, LA is the fastest ping time. But of course, if you're living in India or around the world, then the experience will be a bit slower because the data has to travel further to get to you. The way to handle this would be to move our data closer to where our users are, but we definitely don't have the scale for that yet. I think Taro has to be 100x or 1000x bigger before we even begin to consider that kind of migration. One technology that I just started to learn in 2023 and I wanna do a lot more of is Retool along with other low code or no code solutions. So Retool is something which helps you build internal tools way faster. For example, we have a referral system in Taro and we use Retool to create a dashboard to tell us who do we have to pay out. There are a bunch of interesting features in Retool like workflows and alerting that I wanna take advantage of. And I do think that this shift toward no code, low code tools is going to become way more common because it just saves any business a bunch of time and it gives you way more leverage with what you can do. You might be noticing a theme here, which is that we start with the experience we want to deliver to our users. And then we work backward from there to figure out which technology will enable that as quickly as possible. The only technology worth having an opinion about is on the Emacs versus Vim debate. And the answer is always, always Emacs. The people who use Vim are like the people who eat pizza with a fork and knife. They're just not that fun to be around. Finally, this video wouldn't be complete without mentioning my desire to learn AI, just like pretty much everyone else in the past three months. AI is very, very hyped, but the more I learn about it, the more I feel like the hype is actually justified. Perhaps the most obvious example is GitHub Copilot, which I've been using for the past few months while coding, and it has definitely led to a 20% increase in my productivity, which is pretty massive. At this point, Taro has thousands of questions and answers from engineers of all different levels at all different types of companies. We can use this as training data. For example, we can enable GPT-3 to answer questions using a library of text that we provide using document embeddings from prior Taro discussions. You can imagine a future where the AI chatbot can effectively provide answers based on the context of a question, like the level, company, or geography. The beauty of this is that once deployed, we'll get constant feedback from users about whether the AI was helpful or not. And we can, over time, fine tune the model again using the APIs from OpenAI. AI is the area I know least about, and it's still fuzzy in my head on how and when we would apply it into Taro, but it's definitely an exciting area I wanna look into more in 2023. All right, I hope this has been helpful as an inside look at Taro and what our roadmap is. We're building a community of the most ambitious and helpful software engineers, so check it out at jointaro.com. Let me know what technology you're learning in 2023. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.